Good morning. So for today's notes, I want you to flip to Mrs. Simon's document. And I also modified the document, which I'd like you to take a moment and do as well. So past, right, the documents created by Mrs. Simon's in your notebook. I want you to flip to the day seven homework. Now it says day seven at the bottom but I wrote the day seven at the top as well. So go to the day seven homework and I'm gonna use this as the note page. Cause we've already been solving equations using inverse operations. So I'll put OP. But I, today we're gonna to learn a new method of solving. It's called completing the square. So take a minute and if you haven't found this page already, find this page and then modify it to say solve the equations. So just put an S there and cross that out. And we're going to change that instead of by factoring, which we did. And we need to take time to review factoring, but just not in today's notes. So change the factoring to be inverse operations and write down this equation. X plus 4 squared equals 18. So if you need to pause the video at this time, pause the video in order to edit this page and then unpause it when you're ready. Okay, so let's review how to solve this quadratic equation using inverse operations. And just a key um, reminder about the vocab, when it says solve, we want it to be in the form x equals. And because of these exponents of 2, we have a quadratic equation, which means we're going to have typically two solutions. Solutions are also called roots, and they're called zeros. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Just to review, if I want to solve this for x, so it's the quantity of x plus 4 squared equals 18. So if I'm working backwards, okay, if you think about the first thing that was done to x, we first added 4, and then lastly we squared it. So if we're doing inverse operations or working backwards, we need to take the square root first. So square root of both sides. The square root gets rid of that square or exponent of 2, and we have x plus 4 equals positive and negative, so don't forget the plus or minus sign, square root of 18. Okay, so now we subtract 4. We get x equals, and remember, I like to slide that negative 4 in this case before that plus or minus. So it's negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 18. Now that answer is partially correct. So if you left that as your answer, conceptually you've solved the equation correctly. It's just the answer is not in simplest radical form. So if we had to simplify the square root of 18, so the factors of 18 are 1 times 18, 2 times 9, and 3 times 6. Now the only perfect square factor is the 9. So 18 would be radical 9, radical 2. So my final answer is x equals negative 4 plus or minus. Now when I simplify the square root of 18, we take the square root of the perfect square. So the square root of 9 is 3, and then radical 2. Okay? Let's review this one more time before we complete the square. So take a moment and write down my new equation. So we're not solving by factoring. We're going to solve by inverse operations. So take a minute to copy that down. Pause it if you need more time. Okay, so what's different here is this 2 out front. It reads 2 times the quantity of x minus 1 squared. So to work backwards, 
right? So we're first subtracting 1 from x. Then we're squaring, and then lastly multiplying by 2. So we have to undo that multiplication first. So divide by 2, and we have this x minus 1 squared equals 13. Okay, now this right here looks just like this up here that we started with. Okay, so now we take the square root of both sides. Gets rid of the exponent of 2. And we have x minus 1 equals plus or minus, right, every time we take the square root, and then radical 13. Finish by adding the 1 x equals, slide the 1 up front, 1 plus or minus the square root of 13. Now 13 is prime. It has no uh, perfect square factor other than 1 because prime numbers are, um, the factors are 1 times itself. So we are done. Alright, so let's talk about this process. So in pink, we talk about completing the square. We want to get it in this format. This is the square. Okay, we want it in the format of some quantity squared equals a number. Go up back up here. Some quantity squared equals a number. So what we do is is we take the first two terms. Okay? And we're going to complete that square. So we want to move the 21 to the other side. So I'd have to add 21 first. Okay, so that gets rid of it, and then x squared minus 4x. Now, to complete this square, because it is going to be a perfect square trinomial, right, we are also uh, going to add a box. Okay, so this is completing that square. We're going to complete it equals now 0 plus 20 is 21. Now if I add a box, if I add something, the box is just a placeholder for some number. So completing the square is also called the box method. If you hear a teacher next year, or in a couple years in Algebra 2, they might call it the box method. And remember, whatever we add to one side, we're going to add to the other. And it's always going to be plus. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we want to look at um, completing this square, okay? So what completes the square is you take half of this number, so the box we want to put up here, the box equals, you take half. Now this number in the form of a quadratic, so standard form is typically we can write it up top. Remember is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're actually, the box is the c. So to find the box we take half of whatever the b value is. So half of b and then square it. So half of 4 is 2, and then 2 times 2 is 4. So our box is 4. So we add 4 to both sides. Okay? Good. Now we're going to factor this. So that's why before we were reviewing factoring, but we'll review it here. So we look at the trinomial. It has three terms. Is there a greatest common factor? Well, there's a 1 here, really, even though it's not written. So the greatest common factor, because it's a 1, is just 1. So we're going to set up our two parentheses. And then actually add these two. 21 plus 4 is 25. And then what goes first in the parentheses is x times x. And remember, we want the factors of 4 that add to a negative 4. Okay, and I'm going to give you a hint with completing the square, these two factors are going to be exactly the same. 
Okay, so what multiplies to 4 and adds to a negative 4 is going to be 2 times 2. Now, it multiplies to a positive 4, so these two signs have to be the same. And I'll give you a hint, you just look to the middle. It's going to be negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. Okay, these will always match. So, since they match, we can write it in a simplified form as x minus 2 squared. Okay, now it's in that format that we started with up here. Okay, so that's the method of completing the square. Um, we add the box, complete the square by filling in the box. Remember, it's half of this number squared. We write it out as two factors write it in a simplified version, and then solve it just like we did the last lesson. So square root of both sides gets rid of the exponent of 2. So x minus 2 equals plus or minus. Now 25 is a perfect square, or friendly, as Kirk called it. So square root of 25 is 5. So now add the 2, and we get x equals 2 plus or minus 5. Okay, so our two answers, so one answer is 2 plus 5, so you follow the plus sign, and the other answer is 2 minus 5. So the one answer is x equals 7, and then the next answer is x equals negative 3. Okay, if you want, okay, we can skip this whole line right here. And once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to go right from here to here. So maybe we can do that on some of the examples in the back. Okay? So now we're going to go down and complete the square in number 2. And remember, we just want to get it to look like this. And from here, we just solve using inverse op. So first step is to... Again, we want to complete the square for these first two, so we got to move the 16 over. And I'm going to just move it over. We know it's going to become negative, so I'm going to write down the x squared. So I'm just skipping showing the subtraction. Add the box. Again, this is a positive 16. When we move to the other side, it becomes negative 16. Add the box. So what goes in the box is half of 10 is 5, and then 5 times 5 is 25. Okay, we can add the negative 16 plus 25, which is 9, and then we're going to factor this side. Okay, so when I factor it, remember they're going to be the same factors. So we have x and x. This middle sign's a plus, so these are both going to be pluses. And then what number multiplies to 25 and then adds to 10, and they have to be the same, it's 5 and 5. Okay, so now we rewrite it as x plus 5 squared, and then take the square root. So square root of both sides, and we end up with x plus 5 equals plus or minus 3. Because 9 is a perfect square, it's friendly. So now subtract the 5. x equals negative 5 plus or minus 3. So one answer, remember, is negative 5 plus 3, and the other answer is negative 5 minus 3. So now, find my solutions, roots, zeros, they're all the same. Negative 5 plus 3 is a negative 2, and negative 5 minus 3 is a negative 8. Alright, pause the video if you need to catch up, but I'm going to move to the back. All right, number three. We don't need to adjust the directions here because it says using the method of completing the square, find the solutions. Okay, the solutions, let's also just make note that they are also called roots um, or zeros. Okay. It gives us a hint on how it wants our answer in the top of the box. So here we need a radical. 
Okay, so nearest hundredth, that means we're going to get a decimal. Okay, so I have to go to the calculator for that. But let's look at the radical format. So remember the first thing we do is move, so we want to complete the square for those two. We move the 4 to the other side. So it becomes x squared plus 8x plus the box. It's positive on the left, so it's going to be negative on the right. We add the box to both sides. And so half of 8 is 4, and then 4 times 4 is 16. We're going to combine negative 4 plus 16 is 12, and then we need to factor. So remember the same factors. Look in the middle, it's a plus, so they're both going to be pluses. The same number that multiplies to 16 and adds to 8 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16, and 4 plus 4 is 8. Now we write it as the square, so x plus 4 squared equals 12. So now at this point, we've completed the square, and now we're going to solve using the square root method. So take the square root of both sides, or inverse operations. So x plus 4 equals plus minus radical 12. So subtract the 4. And we get x equals, again, slide it up front, negative 4 plus or minus square root of 12. All right. Now, the only thing we need to do is check to see if we can simplify the radical. So if we look at the factors of 12, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, ah, it has a perfect square factor, so therefore we can simplify it. So 12 is 4 times 3. And we get negative 4 plus or minus. The square root of 4 is 2. The radical 3 is left alone. Okay, last one for today. This one we need our calculator for, so we want to have that handy. Decimal form just means once we get to this step right here, we can just type it in the calculator and get the decimals. Okay, so let's complete the square for the first two. So x squared minus 6x plus the box. When I move that negative 2 to the other side, right, becomes positive 2 plus the box. Okay, so half of 6 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. Factor, and 2 plus 9 is 11. So it's going to be x times x. This middle sign is a negative, so minus, minus. What's the same number that multiplies to 9 and adds to 6? So it would be 3 times 3, and negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. All right, we write it as the square, because we just completed that square. Now we solve using inverse operations. So we take the square root. We have x minus 3 equals plus minus square root of 11. Add the 3 over. We get x equals 3 plus or minus square root of 11. So now these answers in decimal form, so let's go to the calculator. So pause it if you need to catch up and then unpause it to go to the calculator. So one answer is going to be 3 plus the square root of 11. So 3 plus square root of 11. Now the directions say to round to the nearest hundredth. So hundredth has two zeros, so it's the second decimal place. So it's going to be 6.3. Now to the right of that one is a 6, so we have to round that to a 2. And then the other answer is 3 minus the square root of 11, which is a negative 0 0.3. And also to the right of that 1 is a 6, so 2. So my two answers, and this time I'll write as a solution set. I like to write the negative first, so negative 0 0.32 and 6.32. All right, 
So we have one more method just to summarize before we go. That is um, the third method that you've learned so far for solving a quadratic. So the first method, right, and you don't need to write this down, our first method was factoring. And we really practiced factoring in the last unit we did with solving quadratics. Second one we did was the inverse operation, operations, which is also called the square root method. Okay, and then the last method, or not the last, but the last in what we've covered so far, is completing the square. The last method for next time, number four, is going to be the quadratic formula. And I'll share with you a little tune of how to memorize that formula. You don't have to memorize it anymore because it's on the reference sheet. The state gives it to you. But if you had to, there is a bunch of videos of different songs and how to memorize it. So I'll share those with you just for fun. All right, so join me on the Zoom, our next Zoom, in order to do some practice. Take care.